What's up, everybody? A few weeks ago, I did a video on how much it would cost to comfortably buy a $400,000 house using the 30% mortgage to income ratio and the 50, 30, 20 budget. And it left a lot of you feeling overwhelmed because the amount came to $186,000 salary to comfortably buy that house. I get it. Today, we're gonna use a little bit of a different formula and we're also gonna use an $800,000 house because unfortunately, $400,000 is not the median price point in a lot of places like where I live. It's more like 800,000. So today's video, we're gonna focus on that. Now, you may be already throwing things at me or screaming at me for even suggesting you buy a house in today's market, and I get it. I get your frustration, but this is for informational purposes only, so it may come in handy. If not today, then someday. So let's dive right in. So we'll start with your mortgage and then we'll move on to your living expenses and we'll end with how much you need to net to cover everything and not be completely house poor. Think of the acronym PITI, P-I-T-I, principal, interest, taxes, real estate taxes, and insurance, homeowner's insurance. There could possibly be a fifth component, which is mortgage insurance or PMI, and that depends on how much you're putting down. Typically, borrowers that are putting less than 20% down when they buy a home will be required to pay mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is also typically required on FHA and USDA loans. Out of these five components, if you get a fixed loan and the 30-year fixed loan is the most popular loan, the monthly amount will stay the same throughout the loan. They will vary between how much principal and how much interest you're paying within that amount, but the actual monthly amount will always stay the same. As for your insurance and property taxes, these numbers can change from the original amount. Your property tax is based on the assessed value of your house, so if your house goes up in value, which is what we all want, your property taxes will go up as well. Now, the assessed value is different than the market value. You may be buying a house that costs $800,000, but the assessed value is $650,000. So your property taxes are based on the $650,000. Every state has a different property tax rate, so definitely check with your state so you get the most accurate numbers for your budget. For our example of the $800,000 house, we're gonna say that the assessed value is also $800,000 just to make the math easy. As far as the property tax rate, we're gonna use 1% of the assessed value, which is the average property tax rate according to bankrate.com. So $8,000 divided by 12 equals your monthly payment payment for your property taxes or $666. Your home insurance does adjust depending on inflation and other factors, such as severe weather. You can shop around for home insurance and a lot of people end up bundling their home with their cars to get a better rate. So that's a good tip to keep in mind. For our example, according to bankrate.com, the average home insurance cost is $120 a month for a policy with $250,000 of dwelling coverage. So for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna triple that amount for our insurance cost which should cover around $750,000 in dwelling coverage. So $360 a month would be our home insurance payments. But keep in mind, not all states are created equal when it comes to home insurance. Every state has different risks that impact insurance rates. According to bankrate.com, the state with the lowest home insurance is Hawaii, and the highest is Oklahoma. So check with your state to see what the average cost is for your budget. I can tell you that here in Maryland, your homeowner's insurance would most likely be a lot less than $360 a month. As for mortgage insurance or PMI, this is generally required until your loan reaches 78% of the purchase price. So if you're putting less than 20% down when you buy the house, you wanna add in this number to your budget, which will vary depending on the type of loan you get and how much you're putting down. According to Freddie Mac, for an $800,000 house, the PMI will range from $190 a month for 15% down to $730 a month for 5% down. For our example, since we're going to put 10% down, let's use $400 for PMI. And like I said, this will go away once you have 20% equity in your home. By the way, you can always add payments and allocate them towards principal to shorten that time and also shorten the length of your loan. So to review so far, we have 
$666 for property tax, $360 for home insurance, and $400 for PMI. Now we need to calculate the principal and interest. We're gonna use a mortgage calculator from bankrate.com with a down payment of 10% for a 30-year fixed loan. This is a good time to remind you that I am not a lender nor a financial advisor, and interest rates will vary depending on your specific situation. This video is for educational purposes only, and I will put links to all the sites I used to get these numbers in the description and on my blog, needhomeinfoblog.com. To really know your specific numbers, you should contact a local lender who will quote you the right numbers for your specific situation. So for our example, let's go over what bankrate.com is showing us for November of 2023. Home price, $800,000, down payment of 10%, $80,000, interest rate 7.8%, so your principal and interest is $5,183. So let's add in our other numbers. $666 for property tax, $360 for home insurance, $400 for PMI, and we get a total of $6,609 a month. Please keep in mind these numbers are averages. Your property taxes, insurance, and PMI could be very different depending on where you live. But let's move on to your other living expenses. First, we'll go over the fixed expenses per month. $6,609 for housing, $400 for utilities, $350 for health insurance, $300 for car payments, $100 for gas, $100 towards your cell phone, and $120 for internet and TV. Your other costs per month would be $400 for groceries, $200 for entertainment, I threw in $100 for miscellaneous because I'm sure I'm forgetting something, $200 towards your credit cards, $200 towards a student loan, and $300 for savings. This totals $9,000. $379. Now, these numbers are hypothetical. Only you know how you live, so feel free to plug in your own numbers to get a more accurate total. So 9,379 times 12 equals 112,000 $548, which is what you need to net after taxes just to cover your expenses. Now we need to figure out how much you need to make in order to have 40% of your income go towards your mortgage. So to figure that out, we divide $6,609 by 40%, which equals $16,522. In my $400,000 video, we did 30% of your income towards your mortgage. In this one, we're doing 40% of your income towards your mortgage. So I just wanted to point out the difference. So in order to live comfortably and not be completely house poor, you need to bring home $6,522 a month or $198,000 $270 a year. Now this is what you're bringing home. In order to calculate how much you need to make or your gross income, we need to do a little more math. In order to figure out your gross income, if we assume your net income is 75% of your gross income, we'll take the monthly net and divide it by 0.75. So 6,522 divided by 0.75 equals $22,029. 22,029 times 12 equals 264,352, which is a lot of money. Even if it's split between two people, it's still a lot of money. Now keep in mind, this is putting 40% of your income towards your mortgage. If you prefer 30%, just go back and rework the math with the 30%. Because I know this can be really overwhelming. And my numbers may look very different from yours. So simply just take them and adjust them to represent your lifestyle. And not to further depress you, but it does cost money to actually buy the house. You have your down payment, closing costs, and inspections and appraisal. With an $800,000 price, it'll be around 3% give or take for your closing costs, at least here in Maryland, plus the 10% down and appraisal and inspection. So $80,000 down payment plus $24,000 for your closing costs, $500 for appraisal, and probably around $700 for inspection, which equals $105,200. So I threw a lot of information at you today in this video. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or depressed or mad at me, take a break from the video, go take a walk, walk your dog, have a drink, whatever it takes to clear your head, take a deep breath, then come back, look at the numbers, plug in your own numbers for your lifestyle, and speak to a local lender so you can get the most appropriate loan numbers 
for your budget. I hope you did find this helpful. Remember, it's for educational purposes only as everybody's situation is specific to them. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.